Hello everyone, welcome to the Game Design Perspective. I'm Santi, I'm a senior game designer in the video game industry. And today we're gonna to talk about how side quests are designed. A disclaimer, this is my process and this is a process I've used in open world games and the AAA industry, but that does not mean that other studios use the same process. Also, the opinions I express in this video are my opinion alone and does not represent any of my current, future or past employers. This is my, my opinion alone. That being said, to define how side quests are designed, what are the requirements for a side quest, right? So so when we look into a side quest, so we have, have it here. So the two things that you need is a challenge and a reward. Uh, this is the most basic building blocks of a side quest. And I'm pretty sure most players can understand this just by playing. So the way this works is that challenges tend to feed on the reward and the reward tends to feed the challenge. So they tend to communicate. It's not just like, hey, you do something, I give you something. So what does this mean? So challenges tends to be based on systems that create dichotomy, that create puzzles or things that the player needs to solve. So a very common system that challenges uses is combat. Of course, there's puzzles and there are other systems in games that create a challenge, but the most common one is combat. So by having this combat system, we can create a challenge to create a side quest, but then the reward needs to feed a system as well. You can give cosmetics, but side quests tend to feed a system as well. So, hey, have a new piece of armor or have a new weapon or have experience. And they will all feed back into a system. In this case, the system feeds the combat as well. Because this is the most basic form of a side quest. But let's see an example. So here we have combat, and then we have a bunch of side quests. This is actually an example for Final Fantasy 16. A lot of people talk about how Final Fantasy 16 side quests were not ideal. This is what the discourse is online, right? And the main problem is that the whole game is based on one system, and that's combat. So if combat feeds a side quest, and the side quest reward feeds the combat, then you end up with like a very stale loop. The only thing the designers can do is to feed the combat to feed the side quest, and the side quest to feed the combat. Every reward you get will go back and feed the combat and the combat will go back and feed the side quest. The only challenge you can give if you only have one system like combat, the only challenge your side quest can give is combat. And therefore, because there's only this system, the only reward you can do that can meaningfully change the game usually would be combat oriented as well. Experience, progression, materials, every system ends up feeding into combat. Even the item creation in Final Fantasy 16 tends to be all fed back into combat. And this creates these stale situations that MMOs also have. MMOs tend to be heavily based in combat as well. So these like go kill 10 things and bring them back is to create a side quest that the only challenge available is combat. So they become stale. No matter how good you write them, they can become stale when the only system you have is this. So you end up with a system that looks like this, that does not communicate in any way with other things. The side quest ends and has nothing to communicate to other systems other than combat. And combat is the only challenge available to the side quest. So you end up with something pretty clear. This is the only way that side quests can work in example of Final Fantasy 16. But Final Fantasy 16's focus was heavily on the combat. So this is a question for you to ponder. In the case of Final Fantasy 16, the designers and the team, the director decided that it was better to give them side quests and have narrative in them that not have them at all. I wonder, write in the comments, what do you think? Should Final Fantasy 16 have like side quests or should have been like a more linear experience where the side quests interesting to you or not, right? But th there's a reality that this actually happened in this case. It, this was actually the design and this is what the, the side quest in Final Fantasy 16 did. You can see it for yourself. So let's see another example of another action RPG, in this case, The Witcher. So The Witcher 3 has combat. They have this combat system, right? And they, but they have 
all their systems that create dichotomy around. You might call them mini games, but in case of open RPGs, these type of systems are significantly more important than a lot of people give them credit. Why? Because each one of these systems, even though fist fighting is a related to combat, it's a different system. Let's say we create side quests around, let's say these blocks around our side quests. So we have side quests here that are related to these other dichotomy systems that does not necessarily are in combat. When you do horse racing as a side quest, the horse racing reward can communicate to combat or communicate to Gwent or communicate to fist fight. When you have a challenge like a side quest that the challenge is fist fighting, the reward can fit horse racing or the reward can fit combat or the reward can fit Gwent, which are different activities. So what happens? This becomes a cross-like communication of these dichotomy systems to create multiple different side quests that create variety. When you earn something in horse racing, like experience or a new piece of equipment, that feeds combat. Or a Gwent card, you know, if you win in a fist fight, you win a Gwent card. Well, that feeds Gwent that can feed back into combat and the opposite, right? So do we have the side quest, which challenge is Gwent, right? But the reward feeds combat. As you can see, just immediately by having these other dichotomy systems that Final Fantasy 16 did not have, we have a completely different set of side quests that can help the variety. Not to say that Final Fantasy 16 is a bad game. I actually really enjoy it, but it's definitely more an action game than an RPG. Now, tell me in the comments what you think of this idea that Witcher proposes. And you can see it, right? Because if you go back and see The Witcher 1, The Witcher 2, and The Witcher 3, all of them understood this and have mini games every single time. But now let's see one of the most recent RPGs that come out, and that's Final Fantasy VII River. Final Fantasy River looks like this. It's incredible. In my opinion, it's incredible. Because the reality is that you have Chocobo activities in that game that feed to the Gold Saucer. And the Gold Saucer can feed combat. And open world activities can feed the combat sim that feed combat. Combat can feed mini games or proto relics. The item transmuter is used for like side quests a lot. Hate them or love them, it's used, right? And then you can have objects that feed the combat in there. Or the combat can feed Queen's blood. In the gold saucer, you have combat that you can use to buy objects like items that feed or materia that feeds the combat or Queen's blood uh, packages that you can buy through gold saucer points or through a normal guild that you can obtain through combat or open world environment right and the open world feeds the combat scene that feeds the proto relic because you need the summon for example so this whole thing becomes a network a network of activities a network of systems that create dichotomy in a game that allow the, the quest designers to pick what they want to do or what challenge to give and also to pick what is the reward? So every game, every quest designer in the industry looks at what are the systems available. They tend to not make new systems. That is a game designer role. And the game designer can create new systems only if direction allows it, right? Because systems are expensive. So it is actually surprisingly complex to create side quests that are really varied because side quests depend on the systems. It depends on this dichotomy and these challenge systems. In the case of The Witcher, you have at least four systems. And in the case of Final Fantasy VII, you have multiple mini games, multiple systems, and multiple types of rewards that you can give. So if you get Queen's Blood cards for a combat encounter, or if you get a, a weapon through in the Gold Saucer or items through Queen's Blood, that feed the combat, then you are encouraged as a player to go and look for different activities and you have the choice. So when you see a game that has a limited amount of systems, you will encounter that those 
games tend to have very similar side quests, very same. So it's not the side quests that are the problem. <laughs> the problem is the amount of systems. Which is why, personally, I think that Final Fantasy 16 could have use of a mini game like Chocobo Racing and could, or, or a kind of board game. And this is something that Square Enix understood very early because Final Fantasy VII had a lot of mini games and a lot of objects like Fort Condor. But at the same time, Final Fantasy VIII and IX and X started to deliver similar dichotomy systems that would feed a side quest in the game. We all know Tetra Master, uh, Triple Triad, or Blitzball is not the side quests that are samey. It's not the side quests that are repetitive. It's the lack of systems that is the problem. My name is Santi. This is the Game Design Perspective. This is a quick one. Have a good one.